Right. There are some things we do develop with the same kind of tools as you do. I do all my development on an English FileMaker, whereas I do have a Swedish version that I can just mm -hmm. switch the language to if I want to, which you can do the same if you just go into settings and then you can change your language. But I, I wouldn't, uh, I would dare you to do it in Swedish because you wouldn't be able to get it back. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Right, right. So when we talk to our clients, uh, they are running FileMaker in the native language. But when we do the development, we do it all in English. All right, everybody, welcome to the FileMaker DevCast. I am filling in for our regular host, uh, Dan Smiley, who is off probably sailing somewhere. I, I don't know where he is today, <laughs> but um, I'm filling in for him. And my name is Kate Waldhauser and I'm with Portage Bay Solutions. And I'm really excited today because we have some special guests from Europe who are going to come and talk to us. And uh, we're going to have to be able to chat about Engage You, which I had the pleasure of attending this year in November of 2023. Um, it was my first European conference and I just had a total blast meeting these wonderful people and getting to experience and engage in Europe. So I'm really excited to have them here. And before we jump in, I'm gonna go around, let everybody introduce themselves. Um, so um, let's see, let's start with Johan. Uh, you wanna introduce yourself? Absolutely. So I'm um, very helpful to, to actually take a part of this podcast. And we were so uh, happy to have you as a speaker at, at Engage You earlier this year. Feels like yesterday, but it's actually a few weeks now. So my name is uh, Johan Hedman. I work as a lead developer at uh, Square Moon in Sweden. And, uh, and me and uh, Joris, we are old friends meeting up at DevCons many years back. And then we kind of decided that we wanted to have a, a European conference. And that's when we started to uh, talk about having a, a pan-European conference instead of having something which I used to arrange in Northern Europe called Scandinavian DevCon. And that's how we kind of uh, decided that we're going to go on something that could collaborate in between the two companies, uh, Clickworks and Square Moon. And yeah, I've been around work, working with FileMaker for plus 25 years, so I've definitely been to a few DevCons before. Uh, I think I, my last bed said something like 13 or 14. I can't really remember the exact numbers, but quite a few. So I think I probably run into most of you in the corridors in between sessions or maybe seated next to you or so. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, meeting up with people in a conference is probably the biggest things I get out of a big conference right engage right now. That's awesome. Thank you. Y Yoris, you want to introduce yourself too? Sure. Um... My name is Joris, Joris Arts. I'm a co-founder of uh, Clickworks. Uh, we're based in Antwerp, Belgium, and so that's where the conference took place this year. Um, I'm also a long-time FileMaker developer. I started teaching on software and then on FileMaker in 96, and I started going to DEF CON since 2005. So I had the opportunity to go at the San Antonio DEF CON. I was in Texas once, and I'm very much looking forward to visiting Austin. Uh, in February, so I expect some tips from you, uh, things to do, things to visit in Austin, if you have uh, any tips. Um, and yes, I learned to know Johan at one of the famous or infamous Swedish parties at DEFCON. I don't know if you would remember, but there were some private parties going on in the hotel somewhere, and Johan was one of the forerunners of that kind of activities. And so uh, a couple of years later, I was at Stockholm and Scandinavian DEFCON. I was a presenter there. And yeah, we, we've been friends since then. And then before the pandemic, we had all these local conferences in Europe. So Dutch speaking conference for the Netherlands and Belgium, and then a French conference and an Italian or several Italian even. Uh, and then after the pandemic, everything like fell flat. flat and, um, you want to talk to me about picking up the tradition of the Scandinavian DevCons again? So they were already grouping Sweden, Norway, Denmark. Um, and yeah, we had the idea of like um, joining forces and, and, and do a, a pan-European uh, conference in English, which is not 
that easy because the southern part of Europe, uh, Spanish, French, they, 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 don't, they, they, they all don't speak English. So we are missing out on, on the southern part of, of Europe now since we don't do translations in English. But yeah, we started last year in Malmö, Sweden, and this year now in Belgium, since we are based in Belgium. And uh, uh, glad that you liked it, uh, Kate. Um, we did our best. <laughs> it was really, really wonderful. Um, I'm going to give everybody else a chance to introduce themselves, and then we're just going to have a conversation here. So, John, you want to introduce yourself too? Uh, sure. Uh, John Newhoff, uh, Portage Bay Solutions, and uh, Senior partner owner at Portage Bay. Uh, really excited to hear a little bit more about Engage You. So uh, thanks for joining us this morning. And Zandon, how are you doing today? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yes, uh, Zandon Roger. I work with the Portage Bay as well, uh, senior uh, developer, and I've uh, been working with him for and John and everybody for quite quite a while. But um, yeah, excited to uh, to hear more about Engage and yeah. And Joe, how's it going up there in Nebraska today? Good. Uh, it's cold, but I wish we had more snow. So I'm kind of jealous of the skiing uh, 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 over there. But uh, I'm in Nebraska. Uh, I've been with Portage Bay for also quite a while. Um, I, I agree. My favorite part of conferences is really connecting with people and learning, uh, you know, what kind of uh, development they're working on, what kind of projects and what kind of, you know, learning they're just, they're going through. Just, you know, having those discussions. It's a lot of fun. Jacob, it looks like T-shirt weather there today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, pretty nice here in California. Uh, enjoying the weather. Uh, Sadly, a little bit sick, so I'm not going outside today. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm excited to learn whatever I can here. Uh, I'm working for Portage Bay as well, California, one of the juniors. Haven't actually gone to a conference yet, so I'm supposed to go to uh, my first one in Austin. So that should be fun. Awesome. <laughs> and Russell, what's new in your world? Hey guys, yeah, uh, Russell Appel, yeah. Um... Same with Jacob. I'm one of the the junior developers here at Portage Bay, and I also have never been to a conference, so I'm I'm eager to go to Austin as well to to see everyone and meet everyone. Um, and yeah, I'm like Joe and everyone else had said. I'm excited to hear the insight you guys have on kind of the international development and what that kind of looks compared to us, and kind of the the conversations that we have about you know upcoming features and the the parallels that we can kind of build off each other. So. Again, yeah, grateful for you guys to be here and to have this conversation. So it'll be exciting. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, I have some questions, but anybody want to jump in? Have any any questions they want to start off with? Well, one of my uh, the first questions was kind of about the decision on to go uh, uh, all English. Uh, I imagine there's being in Europe, there's a lot of language barriers. So what? What kind of led to that decision and what uh, do you have any plans kind of down the road for encompassing other languages? So the English language is spoken kind of almost natively in most of the European countries oh. outside if you go to the southern ones. So uh, we got starting start learning English in, in third grade of school in Sweden. And it's probably the same thing in, in Belgium and, and, and other countries around and UK as well, of course. So English was still the Scandinavian DevComs. Uh, everyone was in English. So it's nothing that's new to us. We have another conference in Germany called .fmp that's also totally in English. So, but we do have other local conferences around Europe where they do their native language. So there is one in Germany, for example. And like Yuri said, there is one or two taking place in Italy. But uh, once in Italy, they have translators. So whenever me or Joris or other experienced developers go down to take part of that, they have a translator translating our English into Italian or other languages that, that they actually need support for. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's cool. That's, yeah, the, the, fact, the fact that you can find a developer conference that's inclusive uh, in that community, that's that's pretty special. Yeah, so I think that maybe uh, a lot of Americans underestimate how many FileMaker developers there are outside of America. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that Japanese market is actually bigger than the U.S. right now. 
and we are very close to catching up to you. So you better start getting more developers in the States. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, again, I didn't really know exactly what I was in for, but I was really impressed with Claris's support and, and the Claris partner meeting, you know, and and they were really speaking to the Europeans. So getting an idea of what the European market was like was really helpful. And I also really loved, you know, hearing all the languages in the in the room. I mean, you know, besides the sessions, when everybody was out chatting, it was like, and then I speak Italian because I used to live in Italy when I was in college. So I I met some of the Italians. I said, ah, l'italiani stanno qui, you know, and it was like it 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 was really fun to be able to, you know, hear and and speak a little bit of other languages that I feel like, you know, in the US we don't get as many opportunities to do that, you know, so that was great. I think there is a kind of understanding that uh, whenever you are going up to uh, a non-same country person as yourself, that you speak English. So it's not, I mean, if if I were only are out having dinner with some Swedes, then it would probably make sense to only speak Swedish. But then if whenever I'm with Juris, I just speak English because I, I can understand some part of Dutch, but I, I wouldn't speak it. <laughs> uh, and so it just makes more sense to speak English. But yeah, I totally get the thing what you were feeling, Kate, there, because there are a lot of languages all over the place. Yeah, it's really special. It is. It was remarkable that the Scandinavians already used English as a common language because they all understand each other more or less. And like, I got from you, Johan, it's like dialects or they can understand, but but still they choose English. So that made it easier for us to start a new a new kind of conference, a new tradition building on the shoulders of the Scandinavian difference. And we're also building on the shoulders of um, the dot FMP conferences, uh, like uh, Egbert Friedrich, the German um, host of that uh, conference, was 10 years ago, like he paved the way for uh, a pan-European English conference. So we're building on the shoulders of, of those people. Mm -hmm. But the difference is that .mp is an unconference, so uh, on purpose, not organized, no schedule, and like sessions pop up and emerge during the event, which is which is great, but also a bit chaotic. Whereas we choose for a real DevCon experience with three tracks, uh, vendors, our exhibitors, uh, sponsored sessions, and the whole the full package. That was really a great conference. Uh, uh this is only the second year, right? That you've held it. This was the second year. Right. And how did you feel things compared this year to the previous year? Uh, I'd say that we had a, a really good success. The first year we had more than 130 people attending. Uh, and that was just kind of coming out of the, uh, the pandemic. So we, we, didn't we didn't really know if people would attend or not, but we got so much positive feedback from that one. And then we, we're kind of aiming to get more than 200, even 250 this year, but we were just in the last couple of days able to reach 200. And I think we could have reached more if we got a little bit more help from Claris by kind of giving it a word, so to speak, to developers all around Europe, but also elsewhere. Because right now what we had is, I think we had, remind me if I'm wrong, yours, but we had 22 different countries participating in the, in the conference. Hmm. And that was from Australia, Europe, Canada, US, and uh, so it was well well spread around the world. Yes, I, I agree. Um, there are two things. Gladys was kind of late of confirming who was attending. So if we could have communicated like months up front that Clay Michael will be at our conference, I think we, we will get more attention. But they only confirmed it like a couple of weeks before. So we could not really use that in social media. Uh, we, we know that there was one one or two like VIPs from from is coming, but we we had no names until very uh, late before the conference. And the second thing is that hosting or the DEFCON uh, or the the Gladys Engage event, the the US event, is now planned much earlier in the year. Uh, and that was all also announced, uh, yeah, fairly late in 2023, I believe. Um, so. Now we got a little bit of competition from from Gladys Engage, which was planned closer to our event than we expected. But hey, the, no problem. Uh, but yeah, we were aiming at two fifty. We got just on just at two hundred. Still, 
really good results uh, and a lot of positive responses from sponsors and exhibitors. So. Yeah, it seemed to be a good size of people because it was it was enough to have, you know, there were three uh, three rooms, right? Three, three um, parallel sessions going on at the same time and, um, you know, enough room for people to mingle and, and walk around. Um, do you want to talk about the the event space that you chose or or why was it that that was not where you had the conference in the previous year, right? So I can talk a little bit about what, what we have last year and then uh, yours will fill in on, on, on this year's. So uh, last year we arranged it in Sweden, uh, at, in Malmö, and a conference hall that one of our clients actually uh, are responsible for, uh, which is a really, really old style uh, building. Uh, so it was very kind of unique in that way. And since we were only aiming to get like 100 and 150 people there, it was the, kind of a really good position right at the train station so people were easily getting in and out so um that was last year and then yours you can take off from there yeah sure so one comment we got was that the different meeting rooms were a bit too scattered and people had to run around and, and there was not enough opportunity to to meet each other so we deliberately choose a venue this year where we had a central atrium a bit like the DEFCONs in, uh, in Phoenix, where all meeting rooms uh, were adjacent to one central big hall. So we, had, we wanted the same experience. And I think we, we succeeded there, uh, but that space got, got very crowded. So comments we got this, this year was, it was maybe too crowded uh, at certain times, but I don't know, Kate, what you were thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious, you know, how you think Engage You compares or contrasts with Claris Engage. You know, I mean, obviously it's a different kind of a totally different animal, but what is your kind of mission or what do you see about Engage You that's, um, how does it compare with uh, Claris Engage? It's it's always been a long trick for us making it to the States. Uh, it, it could be, it's a long flight and everything. And a lot of people, I can't kind of think hesitate of making that trip because it comes with a lot of costs. Uh, so having a European conference has even been on the Claris agenda just before the pandemic took part, where they wanted to have one in Lisbon, but because of that pandemic, they was it was cancelled like everything else. So I think that even Claris wants to have a localized, uh, more local uh, conference where everyone in that area would be able to attend. And then still have that global one in the states where they can attract everyone and uh, and 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 have a bigger meetup. Uh, and I think that's kind of a good a choice by them to make it available for everyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was also thinking about um, the uh, the events that you know, like like people have shared. Yeah, the the. It's the sessions and then there's everything that kind of happens like outside of the sessions. And um, I really loved the conference dinner that was held at the zoo, the Antwerp Zoo. That was really very cool. And um, I was very fortunate because I, I brought my family with me and I, I reached out to Joris and I said, "I'm can I bring my four-year-old daughter? And he said, yes, yeah, sure, bring her along. And to me, that's a very European thing too. I, I don't think we get that same response in the States where children are more a part of. Um, and then yours was so kind and brought a toy for Maya to play with. And that was so super sweet. Um, so, you know, how did you, how did you uh, feel or how did you choose the zoo? First of all? Yeah. How did that choice come up and how did you feel about the, the social events? Yeah. Uh well, Antwerp is a city with a very rich history. Like I told in the opening keynote in the 15th century, it was like the Silicon Valley of the 15th century because of the book press being industrialized at that time and, and like being a center of, center of knowledge from the Renaissance world at that time. So I'm very proud of that long history of the city. And we have some majestic buildings like the one we had our dinner in, but maybe I show you some pictures like, uh, yeah. uh, to to give you an idea of what's like. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, yes. So I, I had some pictures. So this was the, the so-called marble hall. And it's an Art Nouveau style hall. So it's not really old, but it has like these uh, unique stylish design features. And, and adjacent to it was a, a so-called winter garden or a covered covered garden in summer you have all kinds of butterflies there because it's it's a zoo it's in the zoo and so we we had some photo shoots there um and then we had the dinner yeah uh so that that was one of the highlights of the event and we deliberately wanted to to make that uh, very very special so that that's normally a place where you cannot go in private. You need to organize events to, to be able to, to visit that place. So for me personally, it was also an experience uh, to be there. But that's one of the, the major majestic buildings we have in, in our city. And uh, yeah. Um, uh, we, 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 uh, Uris, we also had a, a social yeah. event on Sunday for all for everyone attending where we had a beer tasting. So we, yeah. we rented a brewery. And uh, we had everyone take a tour in the brewery to see what happens and the history around it. And then we headed for ourselves for a few few hours so that everyone got a chance to taste the different beers that they were producing. So that was on the Sunday uh, after the partner meeting. So then everyone got a chance to meet up and talk over beer. So that was a good start of the conference. How many people attended that? Was it pretty well attended? We had a maximum of 100. Uh, so it was sold out, uh, and I probably that wasn't a good spot to bring your child to, but uh, for yeah. everyone else, it was definitely good. <laughs> yeah, I I skipped that event. I thought eh, I don't know if this is appropriate, but the dinner was was perfect, and there was another child there. There was a baby too, so it was wonderful. Um, and the food at the conference dinner was also it was unusual was that typical belgian food i remember was there something about that that was yes yeah 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 you're right it was chicken but like uh, a, a special chicken braise that's raised in belgium it, it, yeah i don't know how you translate it but cuckoo or something yeah yeah i had to look <laughs> it up because we didn't know we'd never heard of it before and I told Maya, oh, it's just chicken. And then she ate it and she was happy. Uh, so posh, posh chicken, like the, the better the better kind of chicken. Or... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really neat. So going to uh, Dave Cons in the past, you know, we always got chicken for every meal. So you should be used to chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chicken. And the dessert was beautiful. I, I took some pictures of the food. I don't know if I can find those. I'll see if I can find those when we talk about the next thing. Anybody else have any more questions? I, I, I want to make sure I'm... Let me, let me show you. Uh, okay. I'll throw out a question. Um, just curious about yeah. comments about the uh, the business environment for FileMaker developers in, in Europe versus the United States, uh, what it's like running a, a FileMaker company in, in Europe uh, versus the United States. I know, I know you're there and we're here, so um, but uh, if you have any thoughts on that, I'd be interested. You want to get started, no. Yeah, yeah. A challenge for us, for instance, in Belgium alone, we have three languages. We have the northern part speaking Dutch, the southern part speaking French, and then the eastern part speaking German. And that's all the result of the world wars and the fact that our country is literally or was literally a buffer between the two fighting uh, uh, forces, uh, Germany and, and France. Um, I believe in Scandinavia, it's it's all, all the same. So our clients are scattered uh, in, in multiple languages. So we are used to develop multi-language solutions. Um, we don't have that large customer base. So if we build a product, we cannot, we have not, not a market of like thousands or hundred thousands possible clients. It's, it's all smaller and more complicated and, and all these um, different tax regulations, for instance. Now with the European Union, of course, that's 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 been simplified, but uh, certain countries like Norway are not part of the European Union, so dealing with those countries requires special tax rules and that kind of thing. So it makes things from the right from the start often more complicated and and smaller size or smaller scale than um, maybe you are used to. I'd say that we probably are having the same kind of uh, clients because whenever I've been to DevCons, we've been talking about the different clients that we have. 
and they're like small and medium client companies. And then occasionally we run into a bigger client where you have like thousands or like yours has a huge project uh, where there are like thousand users running on a FileMix solution. But I'd say for, for my company, we're kind of based on two kind of two likes, whereas one is a vertical market product, which we lease out to about a 200 different clients at the moment. And then the other one is customizing tailored solutions for clients, if depending on the needs. Whereas the same for you there, where clients come to you, they stay with you for years because you are so good at doing what you do and, and they're just happy having you aside there. That's, that's the same kind of business as you do. But maybe that we, uh, uh, we bring in clients in a different way because from what my understanding is that Claris have a line of new uh, leads coming in that they're kind of dividing into being between the compass in the States. Uh, whereas in Europe and especially in Northern Europe, we have slim to none leads. We, we're catching our clients ourselves, more to speak. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the same as in the United States. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't typically get leads from Claris. No, that, that's not what I heard. Though that was strange. This is good to hear. Thank you. I think it. <laughs> I think it. I think it depends. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Could be on the states and different things. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Did you have something else in mind, or you want to have uh, a follow-up question on that one that we didn't answer or something? No, that's that's great. I think uh, it sounds a little bit like, uh, in some ways, about the way it is. Uh, in the, I think it's simpler in the United States dealing with the fifty states. But we still have different tax jurisdictions and different employment rules and uh, to deal with between all the different states. So trying to it's a lot simpler if you're a developer in one state. Um, and then the more the, the more of the United States that you try to cover, the more different rules you have to try to meet. So it sounds that sounds a little bit similar in a way. I got a question for you then. Are you involved in doing anything for the K twelve or anything like that? Yeah, we have a we have a uh, if you're familiar with the way um, specialized education works in the United States, but um, uh, we have a product that's, that's used to write individualized educational plans for special ed students. Um, that's used in um, uh, it's it's a vertical market app that's used that that app strictly in, in the state of Washington, um, used by K twelve uh, school districts in, in the state. And we do a little bit of we do a little bit of other work, custom dev work for school districts. But, so a smaller part of things. So I wanted to touch base on the sessions as well, because we haven't talked about that yet, but um, it was, seemed like it was a pretty, pretty packed schedule. How many speakers did you have? We have 27 speakers and 43 sessions, I believe. Um, wow. Of, uh, of which we had, I believe, eight or nine sponsored uh, sessions. Okay. The smaller room. And all of those were recorded and will be publicly available. Is that right? Yeah. So all the sessions from last year are already available at our YouTube channel. So for those who aren't familiar, just search for Engage You on YouTube. And then you have a lot of material to look through from last year. And then we will release all the material, uh, video by video, uh, there for everyone who didn't attend. But for you, Kate, of course, you will have everyone for free as soon as they are edited. Um, awesome. And regarding the, the speakers, uh, we did have more people applying to become speakers than we had spots open for. And we even cramped in a few people to have them there because we thought their sessions would be so good for the conference. So maybe we had too little of a break in between a couple of sessions to run in between ones. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we thought it was important to get a good variety. And we also wanted to have as many female speakers as possible because we thought that was very, very good for the community to get more awareness of the female developers that we have. I think that was that's very admirable. And as you can see on this call, yeah, we are a minority. Um, I um, And I, I think I was one of the late applicants as well because I, I heard about the... Um, the opportunity through WIT-FM, through the WIT-FM Slack channel, which is such a great resource. And 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 I thought, yeah, well, maybe they were like, you're looking for more um, women speakers. So it's a good opportunity. And then talk to John about it and thought, <laughs> what do you think? I could go to Europe. And, and it was, I think it ended up being an excellent decision, but I'm, it's good to hear that you, that you were reaching out and trying to 
make that a priority because it seems like it's an important topic in tech as well to yes. to create that balance and diversity. Yeah, if I may chime in on that, in, indeed, one one of the members of our team, Ananya Anda, yeah. Uh, yeah. girl from India, uh, is one of the board members of uh, Women Innovating Together. And so, uh, yeah, we work closely with her and we were very happy uh, with you joining us. Um, and yes, we did our best to to fit in the schedule. Uh, other examples are Caroline Crimieux from uh, France, who was there as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you for participating. And um, I believe it's it's a good initiative. Uh, so we had 23 women at the conference, so 12% of the audience, which is not bad, I think. Uh, we can try to do better, but it was not only a male audience. And and, 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 and they, they were quite, quite, quite um, a few yeah. women. Yeah. And I know WIDFM is opening up their, their scholarship. So it's not only you can, if you win a scholarship in WIDFM, you don't have to use it strictly for engage. It can be for any conference or a continuing education. And so I will keep mentioning it to, to the members there that if you win an, a, a scholarship, you could also use it to attend engage you, you know, and that's another, another way to help people create diversity and opportunities. So, um, yeah, we, we, we are very fortunate to have really good speakers at our two conferences yeah. and we, we give them a, a good benefit, uh, uh, also for, for coming and doing it for us, because we know a lot of how much time it takes to set up a, a good presentation. So this year they got both the hotel and the conference for free if they had a 60 minute session. So, oh, wow. Um, which which is uh, not even what you can get out of uh, former DevCons or Engage. So I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's an excellent benefit for sure. Well, one of the things we were talking about for next year is uh, we also want to attract younger people <laughs> uh, because we tended to like the the known crocodiles or the, the the how you say it the old crocodiles or the known speakers like the the. Uh, the established names uh, like Vince Menano, Windecourt, uh, Klaus Lahm, those kind of guys. But maybe for next year, we will try to uh, address younger developers. We have a couple in our team. So, Russell, I'm talking to you if you are prepared uh, <laughs> to Europe and to present something at the conference. We would love to. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get started now and get something ready, and I'll yeah, I'll reach out for sure. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Actually, I did have an, a quick question. So you had mentioned, um, I think where you were, that there's quite a diverse kind of sector of kind of languages being spoken throughout. So when you're kind of handling in your guys' solutions, kind of that sometimes the potential kind of translation barrier you guys might need, what kind of, um, in, in terms of FileMaker, are you guys using like specific plugins or any external kind of sources to kind of facilitate any sort of translation for that for you guys? We have our own add-on. It's on Oh wow, great. Place. It's called Easy Translate and it's basically a framework that we use for multilingual multilingual solutions. Um, so it's it's not an uncommon approach like using yeah. global field, field labels, but we you uh, we use the base elements plugin to like create fields on the fly. So if you need a new label, you don't need to go and define fields and then create it and then hook it into your script and somehow all that is taken care for you. You just type the name of the, the, the label you need and the field and, and script updates and uh, et cetera, everything is created for you. And uh, we use that one in, in a couple of our applications. So you can then uh, really change the language on the fly. There's some caching built in as well. So uh, like it's 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 JSON based and it's all in memory. So the languages only if you switch the language, then there's some database operations involved. But if you stick with the same language, then it's basically all in memory and and like uh, read from JSON. So fairly quick. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. So we do develop with the same kind of tools as you do. I do all my development on an English file maker, whereas I do have a Swedish version that I can mm -hmm. switch the language to if I want to. Which you can do the same if you just go into settings, and then you can change your language. 
but I, I wouldn't uh, I would dare you to do it in Swedish because you wouldn't be able to get it back. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Right, right. No, but uh, so when we talk to our clients, uh, they are running FileMaker in the native language. But when we do the development, we do it all in English. And uh, we are using the same kind of plugins and other tools that you have around. So you probably use Auto or 360 Works Migrator. You use their plugins around the world, AMBS maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So we use the same kind of tool as you do on your daily work. No, oh, very cool. Yeah, we we are also very fortunate to to know a lot some of uh, the known uh, companies around the world because we've been to DevCon so much. So we are in personal uh, with with most of the de bigger developers around the world. So if I have any problems with three hundred and sixty works, I just call Jesse Barnum and he will help me out. Or if I need some help uh, with Goya and their their base element, and I give them a call or or wins or whatever. So uh, the community of FileMaker, it's very, very open. So when you go to Austin, uh, don't hesitate to talk to anyone. They will just be happy that you're there and make sure that you show them that it's your first year. And then they will probably take you around and show you and help you out in whatever way you want. Yeah, that's cool. I, it's it's cool that the the FileMaker, you know, the world, it's 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 sounds like it's so global and it's used throughout, but it's such a very close community like you know like you had said it's within a phone call reach so that's yeah that's really cool that's cool to hear thank you yeah there is a very friendly atmosphere with everybody and especially felt that at the engage you everybody was just very open and welcome and welcoming and kind and um i wanted to know if if you had any uh you know, memories or specific experiences from the conference you wanted to share with us, you know, funny, joyful, seeing a long friend you hadn't seen in a while, something like that. Or, or did everything all of a sudden go wrong behind the scenes and you were <laughs> holding everything together? Anything you wanted to share about that? There's always yeah. small things happening behind the scene that we, we just handle. But I think one of the biggest memories I'll get out of this conference is uh, we had uh, Clay Michael uh, taking part of the conference for three days. He was there the entire time, and everyone was able to reach out to him and talk to him. And then on, on the Sunday when we had the social event, he actually had his 60th birthday, so we sang a song for him at the brewery. And at the end, on the last day, he came up to me saying, this is probably the best conference I ever attended. So I'll definitely keep that in mind. He's been around on all the dev cons for like 30 years. So he's definitely been to a few. That's awesome. Oh, that's very cool. One, one cool memory I have, Kate, was a final evening with your daughter. And like <laughs> we sat together with all the Clarice uh, VPs, like uh, Clay Michael, Douglas Wallace, Marie Nomo. And like your daughter hands out a, a sketchbook with, um, yeah, and everybody started to make a drawing in the sketchbook. And then I don't know who had the idea. If it was you, like, okay, let's ask ChatGPT to write a story for the kids uh, with, with all the drawings. And if you want, I can show it. Uh, it, it was, that was the most wonderful moment. So these are the people at the dinner, like, uh, <laughs> uh, drawing. And so there are all kinds of, of weird, weird drawings uh, filling up. And then at a certain point in time, like ChatGPT created the story. I don't know if my star twinkle with a mischievous wing, there yeah. looked many happy friends. There was a cheerful ambulance with crosses on its sides, always ready to do on the top stuff. Okay, you, you get the idea, but ChatGPT did a pretty good job of first recognizing the image and then writing a story with all these weird we had things together. It was like a rocket and a frog and a camel, and and it was all like brought together in a wonderful, in a wonderful story. So that was a lovely, a lovely uh, highlight, lovely moment. Yeah, that was really special. I, yeah, and it all kind of came to in this very strange, impromptu, childlike <laughs> way. Because yeah, I mean, who would have had a sketchbook at the dinner table besides a four-year-old? You know, with her crayons and I'm thinking okay here's something to keep her busy and and yeah that was really cool and I think Draco the Draco engine was on there and there were some other <laughs> things it was it was really cool yeah 
And, and also, you know, both of you presented at the conference too, because that reminds, I, I got to see both of your presentations, which were wonderful. And, um, and Johan did some singing, which was very, very <laughs> unexpected. Right. And, uh, and, you know, again, like there was just the moments of joy at the, you know, and fun. It was fun at the conference too, I felt like. Yeah, we. I think we. Uh, you need to give away a little bit of yourself if you want to have a really good session. If you're just talking straight out, it wouldn't be anything anyone would remember. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm. I've been a frequent speaker at DevCons before, and 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 uh, especially around Europe for many times. So, uh, I, I'd like really like to share my experience and uh, the stuff that I know about FileMaker. But this time, I actually didn't speak at all about techniques that I usually do. I had a session about why we need to become business analysts more than we are in a project so that we actually pick up all the things that are necessary in a project to get a successful end uh, on each project. Um, so once that video is released, I think uh, you can all catch a little bit of that one and, and make better projects in, 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 the, in the longer time. And in your session, um, you definitely have to go and see that one at uh, Austin. So you can't tell them everything about your session, yours. <laughs> yeah, I've been selected as a speaker uh, in Austin, so I have two presentations. Basically, the two keynotes from the last two engage uh, engage you sessions. So the one about ChatGPT, and then the one from last year about. Uh, yeah, I call it the jolly file maker developer. It's like all the things that are non-development stuff that that developers often ignore, like project management, uh, time management, communication skills, uh, and some life hacks or dev life, dev life hacks um, that yeah, can make your life easier. It's based on the experience I have with with the team of fifteen developers we have over here and what they are struggling with the most. And, it's not it's not the technical stuff. They're good at technical things, but it's it's often communication or time management or what have you. Wow, that's so important. Yeah, it's like those things that you kind of you take for granted or you think, oh, I don't need to spend time learning that or practicing that. It's like I, I really need to learn all the the technical stuff, but those soft skills are just as important. Um I know I know Joris, you did a um a survey in Clara Studio, right? To, to get results. Did you discover, you know, which sessions were most popular? Was there a preference in, in content? Because there was such a variety of content at the at the conference. We had no individual session service or just one global survey at the end of the conference. Um, and the content and uh, speakers were evaluated like good to very, very good, uh, excellent very good and excellent, so four and five out of five. But we have no individual uh, session evaluations, so. Yeah, but globally, yeah, the content was was well received. People were very happy with it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have the results, so if, if you want, I can. Yeah. Them. Um, yeah, we'd love to see that. So this is the Clary Studio dashboard, it just went to dark mode. So uh, I love Clary Studio. For this kind of things, it's it's great. We we quickly assembled the form and the evaluation form. So we had 93 uh, surveys filled in. So quality of sessions, quality of speakers, like mostly four or five. I believe that's very good. Uh, there are, of course, always people that complain, but it's uh, a minority. Uh, the panel discussion we had so at the end of day one, we had a panel discussion on performance with two performance uh, specialists, Hansa Kudelka from Two For You and uh, Wim Bekorte from Solaint, together with Clay Michael. So it was interesting, moderated by Matt Navarre. Um, and so that was like rated very positively, I think. Um, then the venue, uh, we got an excellent score for venue uh, locations. So and then the dinner, like you can see here in the on the right side, was overwhelmingly positive. So I'm very proud that we did a good job. Social event as well. Food and catering is always mixed. Uh, food is very different, very hard in my conference. Um, then video recordings. So everybody's looking forward to, to the video recordings. Uh, so it's an important part of the conference to have that. 84% says they're 
going to come back. I believe that's that's good. And most people choose location over travel convenience. So that was one of the other questions we asked. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's interesting. Before, when you have had your evaluation forms coming out for your individual sessions, you've had maybe like five to 15 out of the number of hundreds that actually attended the conference. So having evaluation for each and every session might not give you an overall idea of how good it actually was or bad, um, since it's not uh, mandatory to, to use the, the evaluation forms. Right, right. The sample's too small to yeah. be accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, are there any thoughts about next year? Or is it too soon to tell? It feels like you need a break to recover from all that work, I'm sure. We we already started uh, in the group to meet up and, and, and work on the evaluation of the conference so what we can do better for next year. Uh, but we are still kind of riding the success wave of, of everything that was so good and all the uh, good response that we got from the conference. So yeah, we will definitely send out an invite to you and everyone else here in the team uh, as soon as we have a new date and a location. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was it was a really great opportunity. Any yes. final question? Oh no, please go ahead, Joris. Yeah. Uh, what was new for us was that we had Nick Nick Moore from Australia and uh, Andrew Duncan coming over. So they came. They traveled thirty six hours, I believe, all the way from from down under. Um, and that also leads to interesting meetings we had with him and like partnering together uh, for the future. So yeah, it's it's all about networking connections and, and every event uh, you get more interesting contacts. Yeah, yeah, it's such a great opportunity to, and it's the serendipity. You never know what's gonna happen or who you're gonna meet or, <laughs> what's going to lead to what so it's such a great opportunity you don't know what you don't know that's exactly that's exactly i want to touch base just briefly on how you choose the time frame that you're going for with the conference um having just recently uh gone to pause um and i, I got a chance to speak with christian uh smith there with mbs plugin um, and pause, they ha it was very inclusive, so that wasn't really something where you could bring a family member um, very efficiently. Um, and so for somebody traveling a long distance, it was uh, it was really difficult because there's, like you said, there's a huge cost involved to go to see the conference. And then if you're if you're not able to sort of package it with a family sort of travel, because of that cost, it's it's difficult. So how do you come up with the the number of days that you are going to do the conference? Um, and how much do you influence, uh, since we all are sort of individual developers and aren't generally traveling with a large company, uh, influence some of those developers to bring along their family members uh, with additional stuff outside of the conference? I don't think we actually influenced Kate to bring her family, but we definitely didn't say that she didn't, shouldn't bring her family. Uh, but I think that uh, the community is so open and so friendly to everyone, so I, I wouldn't hesitate to bring my family. Uh, I had my girlfriend with me on the social brewery uh, evening, and she had no clue what FileMaker is at all, and everything around computers is just a mock-up for her in her head, so it's just passing her head, going in there, and leaving the other way. So she had a great time talking to like all of us, but just spending the time there talking about beers and other things because on a social event like that, outside a conference, everyone is talking about everything. Um, but I'd say I, I also attended a pause and I also think that it's uh, kind of an exclusive small group where you meet up and you do a lot of discussions that are great but it's maybe it's not as open as I feel that our conference or the one that we talked about earlier, the .fmp conference is, which I kind of like more. And I'm also a little bit afraid about the Austin one where it's not gonna be in a conference place where we have the hotel and the conference at the same place so that people will be scattered over different places once the conference is finished. 
because the social part about the conference is so important for a lot of people coming there, especially yeah. if you're traveling a long way. Yes, that's what we heard over and over again, the importance of live events and having enough time for chit chat between sessions. So content is important, but so the social aspect is as equally important. Uh, sure. And how do you balance that? Um, it looked like you guys did three days. One was sort of an opening day and then two days of, of sessions. What uh, That seems to be a fairly common algorithm for the conferences. What um, made you sort of stick with that? And does that work well? Or do you feel like there could be more time or less time um, to spread it out and have more engagement? Or how, what are your feelings there? So first, I, uh, we only have a partner meeting with Clarice. So Clarice have a chance to talk to uh, Clarice partners only. So they have a chance of talking more in depth of what they are doing in the future and things that they might address to, to a partner that they've been working closely with. So they had, uh, I think it was two hours that they had on Sunday afternoon where we met up, we had that partner meeting and then we went, had a little bit of a break and then went up for the social beer where everyone was available to sign up for. And then we had a two days conference. And two days is probably, if you count the traffic or the traveling you need to do before and after, uh, people can't really take off an entire week to go traveling for a conference. So two or maybe three days is too much or, or, or uh, even more is definitely too much for people to be away from their businesses. Especially if you're a smaller company where it might just be you or, or maybe a few colleagues. Yeah, and that's where I wonder, like, if you're traveling 36 hours to come to a conference, like, uh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're two days to get there, two days back, and then you're you're on site for, you know, just two days. So that's what I, I wonder about when you're doing the long sort of travels, what, what how, how to sort of gauge that and trying to wrap it in to um, planning yeah. other. Yeah, from my experience going to Dubcons, uh, I needs to be in the States like two days before the conference gets started to get into the time zone. Otherwise, I'm just going to sleep halfway through the day. Um, and then it's taken like a day and a half to get back to, to Europe and then getting into the time zone. So it's like a week being off more or less. So in our conference, we also made it possible for everyone. So we had a, a free room. Uh, where everyone was able to kind of get off the conference a little bit if they needed to take a phone call or do a little bit of work or anything like that. So everyone got a chance to take the most emergency things that got out of the way so you can actually concentrate on the conference. That's a really good idea. I appreciate that. Yeah. When, I, when I'm visiting Austin, we will be flying in Friday evening so that we have like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, to, to get used to the local vibe and the, the time zone and to be prepared for the good conference days. So any That's smart. activities in Austin? Yeah, well, um, I am I live about 45 minutes south of Austin. I don't know. I think you knew that, Yora. So there's, I mean, I don't, I don't go to the city that much now because I'm like in my, in my town, which I can tell you a lot about, there's wonderful things, but definitely tacos. You have to have tacos, breakfast tacos, lunch tacos, dinner tacos, and live music, which you'll find everywhere. Um, but I'll, I'll send you a list of some of some restaurants. And I mean, I'm all about the food, you know, finding <laughs> good food. And, and if the weather... Yeah, go ahead. The bats, the, the famous bridge. For all oh, the yeah. Bats. Yeah. Worry, they're all still uh, asleep. Uh, they're, in, they're in Mexico. Oh, yeah. I think October. I don't remember the time. Yeah, they'll be overwintering in Mexico in the, in the winter, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's a lot of fun to see. That is cool. That is very cool. In the Capitol building, which is... um. It's taller. What is it taller than? Yeah, taller than Washington. Uh, yeah, yeah. A bit of, uh, <laughs> that tells you something about Texas. Everything's bigger <laughs> in Texas. Um, what uh, else? It's, it's, uh, yeah. In Dallas, so I've been there a couple of times visiting her. Uh, she's been traveling around in Texas a little bit, but I've never been to Austin. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. 
a lot of fun. Yeah. I think Joe's been there, right? You've been to Austin. It's been a while, but yeah, it's a beautiful town. Yeah. It's um yeah, there's a lot happening. Most part, you know, traveling to Texas from Nebraska isn't the most exciting of travels, but uh getting to Austin makes it worth it. It's it's a spectacular area. And I love the state parks all around the area. Those are my, you know, any any dense forests is kind of my yeah. favorite pieces of uh you know, uh, of land, but yeah, I, I love that area. Yeah. They call it the, the, the green space, you know, there's a lot of green space. And then of course, um, if you're into water, there's, um, Barton Springs, which is a natural spring fed swimming pool. That's been around since, I mean, well, probably forever, but, but as a formal swimming pool, like in the 1920s. So there's these pictures of it and it, and it still is, but it has a natural bottom, you know, so there's, sea life and there's um different aquatic life that are not sea but aquatic life that are unique to this area and it's cold <laughs> but but people do that you know there'll be the polar bear plunge on january and people will jump in and swim but it's this beautiful crystal clear spring water so that's a very unique aspect to austin and and the hill country the whole area there's springs and yeah i'm sure we can get get into that more Oh, there was one more question and it just so you're both you're mind. both attending planning to attend uh, uh engage in february no oh, I, I won't i won't i won't i don't think i'll be able to make it but uh, okay. I'd like to, but uh, there, there are a lot of things coming uh, i so. get it yeah yeah but uh next time we meet up uh, you i like to speak more about the green areas because that's my kind of hoods as well okay <laughs> we will be a team of three from Geekworks. Uh, excellent excellent yeah so we'll see you there for sure and and about the social events that engage i guess there'll be the conference dinner which i think is the first night or the after the training day and then the um the next night there's going to be a community party event so i don't know if you've heard about that yoris yet um but that will be held i heard from it it's aligned and Proof guys that are organizing it. I believe so. And Portage Bay, we are one of the sponsors, right, John? Is that has that gone through? Yeah, yeah okay. we're sponsoring it. Yeah. So so that'll be so at least there's there will be some events like that because yeah, with everybody staying at different hotels, you kind of wonder how the how the community mm -hmm. networking, all that after hours stuff will happen. But yeah. Yeah. So that's well, the plan. Okay. Well, I guess that's that's taken us through the hour. This has been so, so great to see you both again. And yeah, I feel like you're right. It feels like it was just yesterday. Um, so I look forward to to seeing seeing you, Yoris, at Engage in Austin and Johan the next time we meet, whenever next year, whenever that might be. And um Everybody at Portage Bay, good to see all your faces too. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Engage. So a lot of in-person time. This is awesome. Very awesome. Yeah, likewise. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. yeah thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for joining you. us. And in the words of Dan Smiley, get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time with us at the FileMaker DevCast today. We hope you found something useful, something thought-provoking, and something to take into your own development approach. Things that help you to be more productive and to allow you and your team to get more done in less time. Find us online at PortageBay.com and FileMakerDevCast.com and also on social media at FM DevCast and Portage Bay. Let us know if we can help you or your company with modernizing your approaches and streamlining your workflow. We look forward to seeing you at the next DevCast.